number one that's knocking on our door right now. So I want to go ahead and zoom into southern Wisconsin. We have been gearing up for these rain chances since yesterday when I first told you about them and now I'm tracking them. It's a beautiful day. The snow is not sticking to the roads and you don't have to shovel it. Let's get to Chris Reese, who is tracking this as it pushes in even more to southwestern Wisconsin. Hey, Chris. Yeah, good morning, folks. A busy morning for us here at the First Ward Weather Center. We do have a severe thunderstorm warning. It's going to be areas north and west of Madison. Look at this bowing line segment. I'm going to take a moment to really draw on this here. You see how it kind of bows out. This is a key indicator of some of your strongest winds. What's happening that causes this is your winds are rushing out from the thunderstorms. So here it is. Let's track this out as we go through time. These are some of the communities that will be impacted. Impacted. So we're talking Madison just after 145. She is loving all this snow. Where are the snow angels, Chris? Oh my God, well, we don't have enough snow on the ground for me to make a snow angel right now, at least not here on the patio, but nothing makes me happier than being right out here in the snow and it's still March 31st. Yeah, it's coming down here on the weather patio. And of course I had to seize the opportunity to be outside in this element. This is fantastic. I know it is April 8th. We are taking a look at your weekend forecast. Let you know what to expect early Saturday. We're going to see partly sunny skies. Temperatures are warming all the way up towards 80 degrees. Warmer air that holds more water as well. So one, we have the moisture. On top of that, this area of low pressure, temperatures begin to warm up close to 90, just as I'm expecting for today. Well, when that happens, it does not take long for your car to begin to heat up. You can prepare for it though. Have that supply of sand and salt for traction but I really want to encourage folks to charge those devices because power outages are going to be likely. And we do have a chance at being wetter than normal. That brings us to what we're going to cover at 6 o'clock. Multiple rain chances coming our way. We're going to break down that unsettled pattern when we come back. Time it out. 5 o'clock. This is the start of your evening rush hour. That's when that snow begins to start to work its way in, especially from the south and west. 6 o'clock now. Here's... That's right, the winter storm warning does continue, but some of the students out here are having fun because they are out of school. So I've got three Memorial High School students behind me, and they are having the time of their lives out here. I'm way more excited than Josh is about the ice cream. <laughs> oh my goodness, I, I, this is... This is my happy place. Aww. This is my happy place. If I didn't have to come back in studio, I'd be hanging out here uh, while this snow came down. And after the show, I'm sure I'll find myself out here a lot more, too. Hey, we'll do the weather for you. All you, right. You just enjoy it. Okay, sounds good. I'll, I'll see you later. I'm going to go hang out. <laughs> see you, Chris. I would much rather it be snowing like this than raining, than raining though. Exactly. Chris Lee is wondering where the vest is. Come what on. Happened? You know what? Kids started dressing up as me for Halloween, so I'm going to have to change up my look, apparently. Sorry. Uh, so here we are uh, with some of the cloud cover out in the area and here he comes <laughs> yep all right i'm gonna have to do we're this doing we're doing this it's friday so of course we can get that front tire all right so here we go <laughs> if i die we have insurance right oh, oh nice. my <laughs> let's get that front wheel <laughs> kind of down how's that tire looking uh, looks pretty great nice tread great for the snow i'm sure hey, chris reese already celebrating this morning out on the weather patio Ooh, he's doing his little dance in the christmas trees feeling festive <laughs> Chris is saying. Folks, everybody's <laughs> got to make a snow angel. You got to do one. I made er one earlier, and why have one snow angel when you can have two snow angels? So we're. Oh, oh my gosh. There we go. <laughs> that you just is went for it. My first snow angel of the year. Let's check it out. <laughs> With temperatures that are in the teens, the snow does not have as much water content, which means it's actually going to be a little bit lighter in weight. So I've been out here practicing, you know, trying to get my northern skill set up. And honestly, the Lighter snow, not bad to move at all. And that's good just because light, fluffy snow like what we have right now only weighs about five to seven pounds per cubic foot. So some of those wind gusts, especially if you live closer towards the lake shore on I-94, some of those wind gusts have been upward to 39, even 40 miles per hour at times. Now as we go
Let's start with Chris Reese right away, tracking nine alert days to come, Chris. Yes, nine alert days, and the first one arrives today. That is for our next winter storm, getting ready to move into the picture. I've been watching radar light up all morning long when focus is going to be on southwestern Wisconsin here in just a moment. But we've got winter storm warnings for northeastern Wisconsin, winter storm warnings towards the south and west, blizzard warnings over parts of Iowa. That has not as much to do with snowfall amount, but a lot more to do with just how windy things are going to get here throughout southern Wisconsin. It is winter weather advisories for all of us. Yes, we were under the winter storm watch yesterday, but this time the reason for the advisory is simply because it does not look as windy. Instead of 45 or instead of 40 to 45 mile per hour wind gusts, it's now 30 to 35. So that brings us back down to the winter weather advisory criteria, but still widespread three to six inches of snow from a progressive system. So it's going to move through here quickly and light ice accumulation is also possible. Yesterday, I made you the promise that this storm would be on the maps, and here we are. I also told you things would likely start out as a mixture of freezing rain and sleet. We're starting to see that develop, especially towards the south and west. In Dane County, don't be surprised if a couple of drops are starting to make it towards the ground. But I want to show you in Platteville, this is their sky camera, and things are turning wet right now. A couple of drops on their sky camera. So the freezing rain and sleet has begun to reach the ground towards the south and west. Though things are still dry for us at the moment. 30 is our temperature. Winds are out of the south at 15. That increases the moisture. So watch the humidity continue to move up as we go through time. 34 in Janesville, 31 in Monroe. Mineral Point coming in at 32. Let's take you hour by hour. This is now 630, right around the time that I expected things to start to make it towards the ground. We're seeing that happen towards the south and west. By 830, things are changing over to snow. This is going to become a period of heavy snow, briefly. But still, it's going to come down for a couple of hours at rates of around one inch per hour before things begin to taper off as we start to move towards your dinner time. Make sure that you shovel this three to six inches tonight because as lows fall down towards about nine tonight, it's going to turn everything into concrete. The cold air, it's going to be here as we start to move into the weekend, but also towards next week. We're talking a week or so in the deep freezer with this cold air influencing the northern part of the country. Try not to scream, but watch this. This is the wind chills. We start to move into your Friday morning around 24 below zero. Wind chills stay below zero as we move throughout the day, but by Sunday morning, wind chills could be downright cold and dangerous. So we want to watch that very close. Download the app, folks. We can track all these alert days together here in our next weather segment. I will have a QR code ready so that you can just scan the screen with your phone camera and download that app. So get your phones ready here in about 10 minutes or so, 5 to 10 minutes or so. I'll have that QR code ready for us. Doesn't get any easier than that. Thanks, Chris. 647 now. Let's turn it over to Chris Reese with another look at the weather out there. He is loving all this snow. Where are the snow angels, Chris? Oh, my God. Well, we don't have enough snow on the ground for me to make a snow angel right now, at least not here on the patio, but nothing makes me happier than being right out here in the snow, and it's still March 31st at this point. I cannot seem to get tired of snow. I love it, but this is what we are dealing with out here this morning, and we are cold enough that we're seeing it stick to the pavement at this point. Of course, you see it's white behind me, and we're going to continue you to see that snow as we go throughout the morning, my friends. I want to take a moment and highlight some of the road conditions that we are seeing across the state. Everywhere that you see in purple, this is where you have slippery stretches. So we don't have any roads that are just completely snow covered at this point, but we are dealing with the slippery stretches everywhere in that purple or pinkish shading. Here's what we're looking at right now. This is the belt line at Fish Hatchery. That belt line really in good shape, but we are still seeing at least some snow start to accumulate on Fish Hatchery Road. Here's what I want to do. I want you to use caution as you go to work this morning. By the evening commute, we really should start to see at least some improvements out there. But that snow continues to come down on radar. More moving in from the south as that band moves in from the north and west as well. But that snow continues throughout Dane County and Rock Counties this morning. Those are some of the areas where it is snowing at its hardest. So as you continue to head out the door, please use some of that caution for me. Also, the temperature 31. 
weekend. So we're below freezing at this point. I want to give you guys an opportunity as well to download our first worn weather app. This is going to come full screen, but if you take out your phone, point it at the screen and open up the camera, it'll take you to where you can download the app. This snow continues throughout the morning, folks, and I want you to get your weather information from a trusted source. We're certified most accurate and we're your first worn weather team. We've been telling you about this incoming snow really all week long, and as that chance continued to increase, we brought that to you, and we want to continue to bring that to you as the snow continues throughout the morning. Chris Reed. Steamy and stormy. Mm -hmm. It'll be hot today. Temperatures reaching near 90. Let's get to Chris Reese and your certified most accurate forecast. Hey there, Chris. Yeah, good morning. We are breaking down the bottom line when it comes to the heat because that's what we're going to be seeing, not just today, but also later on this week. Some of those temperatures could be breaking records or tying old records. And I want to break this down because heat causes more fatalities than any other weather related hazard. We're concerned about tornadoes. We're concerned about lightning, but heat is the real danger. In fact, Roughly 1,000 people died in 2021 due to the heat in the United States. So be prepared for that. And while I said it's record setting for early May, it's nothing to write home about. This is not the hottest we've ever been in southern Wisconsin, but still our bodies are not used to this yet because it's early May. Here's the other thing. Never leave people or pets and cars. There's a reason for that. Let's go ahead and start breaking down why you start to get the heat. The hot sun comes down. Your car is out there. Temperatures begin to warm up close to 90, just as I'm expecting for today. Well, when that happens, it does not take long for your car to begin to heat up. I mean, we're talking in 10 minutes, your car is over 100 degrees. Give it half an hour, your car's over 120 degrees. So a week ago, you were able to go to brunch and leave the dog in the car. You just can't do that today. You can't do that this week because it is simply too warm out there. Already starting things out with temperatures that are close to 70, if not in the 70s for some of us. And our temperatures continue to steam up throughout the day. We're at 68 in Madison. Dew points are into the 60s, so it's muggy and it will continue to be muggy throughout your afternoon too. Watch the dew points increasing into the 70s. This is the point where it's so humid, you start to feel like your clothes are sticking to you. You just want to peel them off. You feel a little bit gross, a little sticky. This sticks around with us, not just through today, but all week. We'll see those kind of dew points Wednesday. We'll see those kind of dew points Thursday as well. Well, you factor in the fact that temperatures are going to be in the 80s, if not close to 90, and that's where your heat index comes into the mix. And it may feel like close to 100 degrees at times as we go through the next couple of days. So this is why I'm really breaking down how you can beat the heat. Some of the other things to be aware of, it's going to be that potential for some stronger thunderstorms this afternoon. Much of the area under a slight risk, level two out of five, to see severe thunderstorms at timing likely between four o'clock and midnight. We'll see the storms develop to the north, gradually push south, bringing with them winds, hail, and isolated tornadoes. The isolated tornado potential that's going to be best a little bit farther to the north. All of us really seeing that wind and hail potential, but it's a little bit less as you work your way closer to the state line. Let's time it out. This is lunchtime. Temperatures are around 82 at that point. We'll top out at 88. This is 4 o'clock. You see some of those showers developing towards the north, but as we push towards 10 and 11, that's where they begin to work their way to the south. So we're going to time this out. We're going to stay up to date all afternoon, but here's what you can do. Headed out the door today, grab the sunglasses plus an umbrella for afternoon storms. No need for the jacket or coat. The other thing you can do is pull out your phone right now and open up the camera app and point it towards the screen. That'll take you to where you can download the first worn weather app. Any storms that develop that are dangerous, you will be notified. If your notification store this app are turned on, it'll also track your location so you get notified for the weather that's going to impact you where you are in that very moment. Here's the extended forecast. After today, we go to 90 on Thursday. More showers and thunderstorms Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We are a lot cooler next week. The past few years have been relatively quiet in terms of severe weather in southern Wisconsin. When it comes to tornadoes in Dane County, the last warning was in June of 2018. Others have been few and far between. But should the day come when you and your family are in the path of a tornadic storm, how much thought have you put in to where your safe place should be?
The afternoon was quiet. The sun was shining. It was quite humid, but the weather was generally calm. Everyone is gathered at home as a late afternoon storm begins to brew. It began as a few rumbles of thunder far in the distance. Moments later, you get the warning. A tornado warning has just been issued until 1.30 p.m. With moments to act, where you choose to take cover could determine fate. So where is the best place to protect yourself and those sheltering with you? On an interior wall on the lowest part of the house. So uh, in, a, in a basement situation. Odds are you've heard that one before, but there's a reason and basements are safer during tornadoes. Eric Wilman is a personal builder with Viridian Homes, and he's showing us why where you are in your basement could make a world of difference. This is a major bearing point for the house right here. So this is designed, uh, you see how much framing material is here, as well as this is one of the main beams of the home, which is usually incorporated in your stairwell walls. That's right. Underneath the stairs gives you the greatest defense in most homes, and it's the best area to plan as your safe space. It boils down to structural engineering. This part of the house is designed to carry and support the most weight making this again a safe, a very safe place to be in the house. For some, this contradicts the common fear that a basement stairwell could collapse on you in a tornado. But Wilman shares why not to have that fear. That concrete creates an extra super strong structure that everything is built upon. And then in the unfortunate event that there, there was a cave in or collapse or a blow over, you already have basically, you're, you're in a protected box and then in a box within a box by the stairwell makes that the safest place to be. And while the place you choose to seek shelter is hopefully the strongest part of your home, it doesn't completely mean you're protected from flying debris. So in your shelter, it's important to have things to protect your head, such as a helmet, along with multiple ways to receive warnings like a cell phone or a weather radio. Of course, not everyone lives in a house. For those who live in an apartment, the lowest level of a stairwell is also a safe place to be, or in the basement garage against a wall if you have one. If you live in a place without a basement, a closet or bathroom in the center part of the building is the safest place to go. Mobile homes are never safe during severe weather, which is why planning out your safe place in advance just might save your life. In addition to having a plan, it's equally important to stay aware of changing forecasts when it comes to severe weather. While forecasting is better now than it used to be, there's still a future of improvement ahead. Now, a WISC-TV editorial. I've always remained silent when it comes to the controversial issues and injustices faced by African Americans. Not because I didn't feel the pain, but because I work in public media. My mentor suggested not to voice my opinion, but it's time for me to speak up. The death of George Floyd hit me a little bit harder than the others. He was an African American male, just like me. He was a native of Houston, just like me. But what struck me the most was learning that he was known for mentoring other young men through ministry, just like I do here in Madison each and every single day. I often wonder why society sees my life as less valuable because of a skin color that I can't control. Throughout childhood, I was told racist jokes by white classmates. These jokes caused me to wonder why I was considered less capable of life achievements because of a skin color that I can't control. And in college, a professor told me to drop out because I'd never be smart enough to be a meteorologist, hinting at my race as a factor. I've always wondered what motivated him to say that. The truth is, I've wondered for far too long. It's time for a change. In the past few days, many of those same classmates have reached out to me and apologized, asking me how they can help the cause. I'm thankful, but the momentum can't stop there. The narrative must be changed so that our future children don't have to do this very thing I'm doing now. The narrative must be changed so that our future children don't have to experience the talk that all black parents have to give about police safety. The narrative must be changed so that our future children can know that they're valued, loved, and capable of anything, just as my parents taught me. The Declaration of Independence says we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. Let's live like that.